is up my boy warriors and welcome back to another video another special video be the first video to celebrate and say thank you for 500,000 subscribers which to be honest still hasn't quite settled in my mind right it just it's just it's like an unthinkable amount of people and when i started the channel five years ago pretty much kind of to the day i never thought that it would get to this place so i just want to say that i am very very grateful for everyone who has joined you know watched the routines watched the videos got something out of it because that is ultimately why i started doing this was to share what i'm doing but also to then ultimately help people to achieve their goals realize what their body is capable of whether that is handstands bodyweight training mobility stuff so yeah thank you for sticking around i hope i've been able to help you out and i would actually love to hear from you guys how has your training journey been so far where did you start training what hurdles have you had to overcome where are you now are you close to your goals please leave a comment in the comment section down below i'd love to hear how you're getting on today though i wanted to kind of take a trip back in the past i wanted to share a transformation of sorts of video but i didn't want to do the standard movie montage with music of my training over the years because to be honest with you, it's not that simple. I wanna make something that is useful for you. I wanna share with you the things that work for me, the things I've learned, and as well we'll give you a little bit of context and share myself with you because ultimately I feel like this journey has been with you um, the last five years making YouTube videos, sharing my progress, sharing my training has been very much a part of my life, my training, and the reason that I do this. So the original transformation video that I made was actually five years ago, pretty much to the day. And that was my three year transformation video. And if you want a bit of a throwback, like go check that video out. Um, thankfully, the, the videos have progressed since then. I'm gonna break this one down into chapters. Chapter one is the bro stage. When I first got into training, looks was the first focus. I was a little bit overweight, I was just unfit, not training, and I just went to the gym and started lifting weights, and that was kind of where I was. This was like peak time with Gymshark, Aesthetics, Steve Cook, all of those sort of people. To be honest, this is, this is in my opinion, this is the heyday of bro fitness. I enjoyed that very much. Like it was good fun at the time, going in, taking some pre-workout, getting a pump, doing some arms, having a protein shake afterwards, finishing the session. And, and that was basically it really. And there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoyed it very much at the time. By the way, if you were one of these people as well, if this was also your jam, what you did, please let me know in the description down below. I'd love to hear how many people are like old school Gymshark, aesthetics, bodybuilding sort of people. I did this for a couple of years. I actually got into a bit of powerlifting as well. For those of you who are interested in numbers, my best ever deadlift was 200 kilos. My squat was about 130-ish. My bench was about 100, 105. Nothing crazy, but I was your standard gym bro go. I didn't have any real interest outside of that. My lifestyle probably wasn't reflective or supportive of making the best progress with health or the gym. Which kind of leads me to chapter two, the revolution. Now, now like all great revolutions, there has to be a point of insight in which a change is gonna be made. And for me, that was getting glandular fever, otherwise known as mono in the US. Uh, basically, it's like a viral fatigue thing. I was wiped out for like three or four weeks just couldn't do anything. I was weak. I ended up losing about 12 kilos in the space of two or three weeks, which is a lot of weight. Basically, my last two years of gains flushed down the drain. I was about 90 kilos and I was back down into the high 70s. And it is generally advised that when you go back into working out or doing anything after glandular fever or mono, you've got to be careful about easing back into it so you don't get post-viral fatigue and have those symptoms all over again. And this is where I discovered bodyweight training. I thought, you know, bodyweight training is easy, right? So easy, the easiest. I'm gonna start with that one. Little did I know uh, where we'd end up. So I started off with bodyweight training and I was like, let's just do stuff, but bodyweight version of. Uh, so I started doing your pull-ups, your dips, push-ups, your basic stuff to work back into things. But I quickly realized that this was harder than it seemed, as I'm sure many of you are aware. And also, I was really inflexible. I couldn't actually touch my toes at this point. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures at this point, but when I was doing things like pistol squats and getting into bodyweight leg training, I decided I needed to do something about this. So I just started off stretching every single night. I'd sit down and I started with about five stretches that I found on YouTube, just followed them, did them. That was basically it. And I found another stretch on YouTube and I was like, I'll add that and another one, and another one. And it eventually became this like 30 to 40 minute full body flexibility routine that I just did every single night. And that's what I did. I just showed up and I did it every single night. This wasn't the best methods, it wasn't the most efficient way to do it, but sometimes consistency is the best method itself. 
As I began to learn more, I got into the skills side of things, the hands on the plants, the front lever. And this is ultimately where things started to become really hard. And you know what? I joined the calisthenics dark side. Alongside that transformation video, a couple of videos later, so like probably within the first 10 videos I made on the channel, I made a video entitling my goals and my ambitions and my training routine at the time. So this is like September 2015. It wasn't until a couple of days ago when I went back and watched that video that I realized the goals I set for myself then were essentially the same goals that I have now. Calisthenics is hard. Mobility is hard. Hands to hands are hard. This is where my dad would chime in and say, life's hard. <laughs> it is. Um, and, it, and it's one of those things that is a long-term practice, but not something that I necessarily realized then. But my goals then were the 10 second straddle planche, the 10 second full front lever and back lever, getting a stouter press off the floor, being able to do pancake, being able to do middle splits, being able to do front splits, really the same stuff that I'm doing now. And that's kind of what I went all in on. This was very different to the bro days. The bro days, I went to the gym, I showed up and I did other stuff. This is when I started to get obsessed with training, certainly in a good way. But I was going to the gym and I was training like six days a week, two hours a day, just going hard, basically. At this point, I made some pretty good progress with training. I had the full front lever. I was working towards my planche, sort of, although it had stagnated a lot. I was working towards what I was launching up, but ultimately I was doing too much and I ended up getting injured. And what I ended up getting was uh, medial epicondylitis. I've always known as golfer's elbow, but also a little bit of ulnar nerve compression. This one doesn't sound bad, but if anyone who's had golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, one of these tendonitis will know how frustrating it is as an injury because it's so minuscule, but it affects pretty much everything in the upper body because you can't really do it without elbows. And also it just doesn't want to go away. It is a stubborn bastard, basically. Again, it's felt like the first time where I was just going to lose all my progress because of some silly incident. Ultimately, I took about nine months off in total for this injury, doing a little bit of upper body stuff as I could. But this was ultimately when I decided to double down on flexibility training and just really go hard. During this period of time is when I managed to get middle splits for the first time and really make some great progress towards front split and pancake. Ultimately, there was basically nothing else to do. I could do a little bit of handstands and I could do stretching. So that's kind of what I did. And then this is probably the biggest period of time where I learned a lot about flexibility, about mobility practices. Uh, from various things online, but also people like my man Emmett, who I also managed to meet for the first time. After these nine months, I was just beginning to get back into training. Everything was looking good. And then um, I did something stupid again. I decided to do a flag, which I haven't done in years, on a palm tree, and I ended up tearing my supraspinatus. Again, another big brain, smart move. Um, this put me out for another three months, essentially no upper body training other than rehab. It was after the second industry and just, you know, learning more about good training practice, understanding how to make better progress in which I realized that I just hadn't spent enough time on the basics. And if there's one thing that I want to share with people on this, not to underestimate the basics and just spending time getting strong. This is actually the reason that I created my first ever program, Bodyweight Basics. And it's also something that came out of the bodyweight survey that, that was done a while ago. And the, and the basic premise is, if you do not have a good base in which to build the rest of your skills on, those skills are never gonna reach their highest peak. So I went back to the basics. I went back to the things that started this whole journey for me, the push-ups, the dips, the weighted pull-ups, the rows, the simple stuff. And I just focused on getting strong with them. This was also part of my rehab, but it was also just a focus in and of itself. This was definitely the best training decision that I have ever made. Kind of just dropping the ego a bit, going back to the basics, doing the basic stuff, but doing the basics well. I carried on doing this for another six months or so, just working through the basic stuff. And to be honest, I haven't really deviated from this at all, but it was at this point in which I decided to try to achieve the thing that's basically engulfed my training for the past two years, and that is the one-arm handstand. Now, I understand that not everyone is interested in the one-arm handstand, and to be honest, I understand why. When people ask me why I do it, I don't really understand either. It's just kind of something I do. Uh, it's definitely been the hardest physical challenge I've ever had. Like I said before, the first year doesn't count. You don't really know what you're doing and you vastly underestimate the task at hand. And I thought it was gonna take me six months. It ended up taking me just over two years to get my goal of the 10 second one arm handstand on just the right hand side. The left hand side is still coming and this is two and a half years after I decided to do that. The one thing that the one arm handstand did teach me is that I don't know everything. 
as much as I like to think so, as much as I like to think that I can just Google and find the best information and the information that I need to get wherever it is that I want to get to. And yes, to be honest, that is sometimes the case. There is definitely a benefit to just paying somebody who knows more than you. This is when I first got a coach. I first coached with Ulrich, who's the guy I teach workshops with, fantastic hand balancer. And I now coach with Emmett Lewis, who again, I mentioned earlier in this video. It's definitely one of the best decisions that I've made in terms of my training. I've bought programs in the past, things like Body by Rings and, and other programs. And yes, that had been useful. I'd learned from that. I'd done my own training, but sometimes it's just useful to have somebody who isn't yourself looking at things and giving you stuff to do because number one, they'll probably spot something that you haven't necessarily thought about. We tend to tunnel visual and things and get an idea of what we might need to fix. And number two is we usually tend towards training that we are good at, things that we like to do, things that we know we can do rather than the things that we need to do. I spend at least eight hours a week for two years just on handstand training alone plus my other training, which was just to be honest, mostly basic stuff. There was multiple points in which I thought this was just not possible. And considering the time I put in, it probably isn't worth it, but it was certainly a good thing and I'm glad I've done it and will continue to do it. Which kind of brings us to now. And this was the thing that I discovered when I looked at that training goals video five years ago. It, I thought it was possible then, but I was way off. Now it finally is almost possible. Some of them, yes, I've ticked off, but certainly that planche, that pesky planche. And this is the last thing that I kind of want to finish on because I remember watching Dan Radnall, Fitness Epicues back in the day, watching him sharing about his training thing. And he had the ability to say, I've been doing this six, eight years and this is what I've done. And I always remember then being like, ah, I don't have that. I've only been doing this two years. Whereas now the time has flown by and I've had eight years of training or six years of specifically calisthenics training. And I feel like I can now look back and be like, I see what I've done wrong then. And I'm finally getting to the point in which I can realize some of the goals that I've had set out along the way. The main thing is really long-term consistency trumps short-term intensity. Just showing up, that is ultimately the best thing you can do. Showing up, being consistent, working on the basics, getting some guidance. It is very, very underrated if you wanna make the progress towards what you want to do, get some guidance in the form of buying a program, getting a coach, whatever it is. There's plenty of good coaches and good programs out there. But that is basically uh, today's rambles over. If you did enjoy this video, if you found it useful, you know what you can do. You can hit the thumbs up button and support the channel. It's finally, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. Now we're over 500,000 members strong. But that has basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and peace.